Hey all, it's the beginning of your upkeep, so it's time for another episode. I'm your host, Michael, and let's dive in. This week we're looking at three five-color decks. Warrior Queen by Pongo, Underworld Return by Flash Andretti, and Sisse Elk by Rebel Sun. These decks have access to the entire commander card pool, which means they can run the best cards in each category to accomplish their game plan. Speaking of, let's take a brief overview of each deck before getting into the details. Najila has been a powerhouse since she was printed. She goes infinite with plenty other cards, and you can generate an army over time to apply pressure. Tempo is the best way to describe her. You need to get her out and protect her. Between her combo potential and snowballing board presence, you can rely on her to carry you to victory. Kenrith is the ultimate generic 5 color commander. He's an outlet for infinite mana in addition to having a versatile set of abilities. He does clock in at a costly 5 CMC though, so unless the game goes long, he normally won't come out until you're going off. The deck is proactive and has several combo lines to pursue, making it difficult to shut down. Sisse runs Gigantha as a companion, and the two can assemble a win. It's essentially 5 color Goto, except you need a total of 12 mana to go off, and summoning sickness can delay the combo. However, you get access to a tutor in the command zone, a fat dork as a companion, and the best cards you can run. The deck is proactive, but due to the nature of her win condition, she can also afford to run powerful stacks pieces as protection. Let's take a look at how these decks win. Interestingly, two of these decks run the Najila combos. Najila creates creatures each combat and allows you to pay Wooberg for another combat step. Najila runs just the best too. With Derevi, you need to be able to make contact with 5 creatures in order to go infinite. Nature's Will costs one more, but you can cut down on the number of creatures, although you can't rely on your dorks or artifacts to hit your colors. Sisse trades in Nature's Will for Grim Hireling. This piece requires you to make contact with all 3 players in the pod, but it also provides the mana in the form of treasures, making it easier to hit the required colors and giving it more general utility. Between these, it works better outside of the combo for Sisse, which is why it makes it in over Nature's Will. Although Sisse lacks Najila in the command zone, she can assemble it with help from Gigantha, the Wellspring. Starting with both on the field, you can tap Gigantha to activate Sisse, finding Derevi. Derevi's ETB untaps Gigantha, so you can tap her for another Sisse activation to find Samut, which will give everything haste. Swing with everything that won't die to blockers, you can then use the Derevi triggers to untap Gigantha, which lets you activate Sisse to find Najila. If you've got two Derevi triggers, use the second one to untap Gigantha again to activate Najila. If you only got one, then you can pay a white and tap Samut to untap Gigantha instead. From here, you really only need Derevi, since you only need to untap Gigantha, but Samut will produce warrior tokens each combat as well. One important point is summoning sickness. Ideally, you don't want to just drop Gigantha and pass, you want something to give it haste. Sisse runs 4 pieces to that end. First up is Hall of the Bandit Lord. Although a colorless land hurts in a 5 color deck, especially considering this one enters tapped, you're essentially only paying 1 mana for the opportunity cost of playing another land and 3 life each turn you use it afterwards. It's also legendary, so you can fetch it on an opponent's end step. Lightning Greaves serves as protection as well. Sneak Attack lets you cheat Gigantha into play as well as giving it haste. Finally, Rhythm of the Wild makes your creature spells uncounterable. The deck is creature heavy and runs a creature based combo, so although it doesn't see widespread play, it makes sense here. Sisse is the only deck that excludes the Thoracle combo. It doesn't fit Gigantha's requirements and the alternatives are a significant step down, to the point that even the decks already on the combo don't run them. Not much to say here otherwise, it's the best combo in the format right now. Kenrith also combos with Dockside. His last ability allows you to pay mana to reanimate a creature, so if you've got a sack outlet, Dockside can go infinite. The two included are Skirk Prospector and Phantasmal Image. In a vacuum, Skirk Prospector is essentially a red blood pet, but with Dockside it cuts the required number of treasures down to just 5. Phantasmal Image is a good card in general, but its main drawback can be exploited by having it enter as a copy of Dockside. You can then activate Kenrith for 2 mana to put a counter on it, which will cause it to sacrifice itself. 
you can then reanimate it with Kenrith and go infinite as long as Dockside's ETB generates 8 or more mana. Emiel the Blessed also makes it in since it's the most efficient way of going infinite with Dockside. He only needs to make 4 treasure tokens when he enters. This combo makes it in over other infinite mana combos because Kenrith does need colored mana in order to win. Kenrith also runs the Breach combo. It generates mana with either LED or Lotus Petal. They both have to be cracked for mana, so they can be replayed with Breach as long as you have Wheel of Fortune or Brain Freeze to put cards in the yard to exile for the escape cost. From there you can mill everyone or just play Thoracle. Kenrith has two ways to single-handedly assemble the combo. First up is the most popular way. Intuition finds Breach, LED, and Savine's Reclamation. No matter which card you're given, if you have enough mana and cards in your yard, you can get Breach on the field. Once you've got that, you can recast Intuition, Divine Brain Freeze. The next way is seen significantly less often. Spellseeker finds Ephemerate. Flickering Spellseeker gets you Final Fortune and exiles Ephemerate until your next upkeep since it, like the best card ever printed, has Rebound. Cast Final Fortune to get to your next turn and on your upkeep, Ephemerate will trigger. Spellseeker's ETB will find you Enlightened Tutor, which you can use to put Breach on top of your library. Draw it for turn and cast it. From there, cast Ephemerate from your yard to flicker Spellseeker again, finding Brain Freeze. Recast Enlightened Tutor to find Lotus Petal. You can't pass the turn without losing, so you also can't use Brain Freeze as your finisher, but you've got the Oracle and other combos, so no worries. If you'd like more information, the dedicated guide is in the top right. Anyways, let's take a look at the 99, starting with the removal. There are only two cards included in each deck, but that's not as surprising as which cards make it into every deck. They all run Red Elemental Blast and Snap. REB is cheap removal that doubles his stack interaction and unlike Pyroblast, Red Elemental Blast can't be redirected to Deflecting Swat. Snap is free removal. These decks are all proactive and run Dockside, so the narrower choice here makes sense. Kenrith and Ajila both run arguably the strongest removal spells in the format, which Sisea shoes. There are a couple of contributing factors to this. The color restrictive casting cost and space, which is especially a factor considering the deck needs to accommodate legendaries that don't normally see play. However, Najila cuts Chain of Vapor and Culling Ritual. They're both powerful cards, but Najila is a tempo deck, which revolves around playing a threat, protecting it, and riding it to victory. Chain of Vapor lets your opponents copy it, which is not ideal here. There's also not really a good time to play Culling Ritual. Najila wants to come out early and start building up an army. Also, you don't have a good mana sink, so it loses a lot of the utility. Sisei and Najila both run Cyclonic Rift. They have more reason to run a one-sided board wipe since their win con relies on combat. Additionally, they aren't trying to go infinite with Dockside, so they have less incentive to cut it for a bounce spell that would allow them to replay it. Sisei also runs a Braid, which doubles as creature and artifact removal that only requires one colored pip. It hits Cursed Totem, Graph Digger's Cage, and Opposition Agent, some of the few stacks pieces that can stop the combo. Cursed Totem especially, since the other pieces just stop Sisei from assembling the combo, while Cursed Totem stops you from activating Najila. Since the deck always wants Sisei out and she only clocks in at 3 CMC, Deadly Rollick makes the cut. Oko makes it into Sisei for similar reasons, in addition to being legendary. It also pushes Sisei's power and toughness to 4, which is just enough to protect it from the undoubtedly angry elks you'll be making. If Sisei gets stolen, Oko can also get her back by trading another artifact or creature, although she does need to have 3 or less power. She also runs Pyroblast. Normally this one doesn't see play above 2 or at the very most, 3 colors. However, Gigantha does put a limit of just 1 pip of each color in the mana cost, so Sisei needs to adjust for the cards it no longer has access to. I'll get back to this in a second since it'll be more relevant in the next section. One last card I want to talk about here is Gilded Drake. Sisei and Kenrith are too proactive to include it since they want to remove the combo and stacks pieces, but it's run in Najila. Najila is a tempo deck and Gilded Drake fits the playstyle extremely well by not just removing a creature, but taking it. If the stolen creature is a commander necessary to your opponent's decks like most lower colored generals, they'll need to spend their removal on their own commander instead of hitting Najila. 
She also runs Bosiju, which is an amazing new removal card that isn't a spell, making it a lot harder to stop. Anyways, let's move from the field to the stack. All of the decks run the staples. Veil of Summer is here too, but I didn't want to put more than 6 cards on the screen at a time. However, there are 3 notable exceptions missing. Those would be the Forces and Mana Drain. Force of Negation doesn't make it into any of the decks since in addition to requiring a blue card to exile, it can only be cast for its alternate cost on someone else's turn. These are 5 color decks so they're naturally going to have fewer blue cards to pitch. Force of Will does make it into Najila and Kenrith, but Mana Drain doesn't. Although it's the strongest 2 CMC counter, it's still a 2 CMC counter, which is slow compared to the game plan of Kenrith. Najila cuts it because of how few uses there are for large amounts of colorless mana. Sisse doesn't run any of them because having Gigantha as a companion excludes cards with multiple pips of the same color in the mana cost, which brings me back to what I mentioned earlier. Pyroblast makes it in to adjust for the cards Gigantha doesn't allow in. It does, however, still run the ones that care about having a commander on the field. Najila does as well, but since Kenrith clocks in at 5 mana and likely won't come out until the late game, it's just in these two. Najila and Kenrith also run Miscast, which Sisse excludes for slot reasons. It's just not as good as the other 1 mana counters. I would put it next in line though. Ranger Captain of Eos also makes it in. Not only does it serve as a silence effect, but it finds a 1 CMC creature. The decks could just find a dork, but they also run Esper Sentinel and Ragavan, so it has a lot of utility. Najila is the only one that runs Concerted Defense, since she essentially turns it into a Spell Pierce which can scale up if you get one of the Rogues or Wizards out. Sisse has some more unique interaction. Rhythm not only makes your creatures uncounterable, it can give them haste as well, which is important for Gigantha. Shalai shuts off removal. Although it's pricey, you already have the means to assemble a win in the command zone, you just need a way to protect it and Shalai fills that role very well. It can be fetched out in the middle of the combo if an opponent plays removal after Samut hits the field. You'll need to get 2 Derevi triggers from combat damage, but you can use Samut to untap Gigantha in order to find Shalai. She's also a mana sink, so if you can't win with Najila, you can use Shalai and Cradle to go for a win with Beats. Teferi is the best at protection though. Fetch it on an end step, untap, and combo off without needing to worry about your opponents interacting. There's also a fun line with sneak attack. Sneak Gigantha onto the field and activate Sisse for Teffy. You've now got a silence effect online. Use Teferi's down tick to bounce Gigantha, sneak her in again, and then go for the win. Now that we've covered how the decks stop their opponents' plans and protect their own, let's look at how they fuel themselves. They run the best card draw engines. Not much to see here, these are staples for a reason. Then there are some more staples. One important thing that you're not seeing here though are the rest of the cantrips and wheels. Kenrith does run Jataxian Probe, but Ponder and Preordain don't make it into any of the decks. There are a couple contributing factors, such as having access to dorks for turn 1 plays, being proactive, and space. Wheel of Fortune and Windfall only make it into Kenrith since he invests the heaviest in the ramp and can take advantage of them the best. Additionally, Sisse is a tutor in the command zone and Najila has a plethora of one card combos, so it's the main deck that needs it. Najila also runs Mindblade Render, which is card draw that also helps Najila create tokens. Sisse runs Jessica's Will since it can get the mana needed for Gigantha, but Najila doesn't really have an outlet for that mana and Kenrith isn't typically on the field, which makes the card a lot worse. Now that we've looked at the draw, let's look at the higher quality fuel for the decks. They run the best tutors in Commander. I think I'd be slightly offended if any of these didn't make it in. However, only the decks on Thoracle run the Forbidden Tutors since, I mean, they're combo pieces. Consult is only useful as a tutor if you're about to die and have no other options, but it is significantly better in Najila. Although it is high risk, you only need one other card in addition to your Commander to win. The same goes for Tainted Pact, but that has more utility in Kenrith as well. They also run Neoform, which turns any of their dorks into Thoracle. Sisse eschews it since it isn't on Thoracle and there aren't many 2 mana creatures to turn into Najila or Derevi. I already talked about Ranger Captain of Eos, but they also run Wishclaw Talisman. They're proactive decks, so this is a pretty standard inclusion. 
Najila and Sisse run some creature tutors that don't make it into Kenrith since their main combos rely on just creatures. These are the best two, but Najila does take this a step further with Evolution and Pact. Neither of these can find Derevi, although Evolution does need a dork. Evolution can also find Thoracle if you've got Consult in hand. Diabolic Intent makes it in as well since Najila creates Sack Fodder each combat. Kenny goes a different direction. Gamble is a staple right up until you hit 5 colors, at which point you've got access to enough that you can cut it. However, Kenrith is reanimation and it runs Breach, so Gamble makes it in. Between Najila only needing to find one card and Sisse's reliance on the Najila combo, it's understandable that they don't run it. Bringing it back to Breach, Intuition can single-handedly assemble the combo, as can Spellseeker. Sisse runs Imperial Recruiter, Derevi, Dockside, and Treasonous Ogre are the main targets. The decks are proactive, so they don't invest too heavily into stacks. Besides Sisse, but we're getting to that. First, Voidwalker makes it into all of the decks except Sisse, because Gigantha cuts off access to it. It can run Opposition Agent, which is cut from Kenrith because it's too slow. Najila runs Dranith Magistrate since it fits the tempo-y game plan, but the other decks are too proactive for it. Anyways, back to Sisse. First, let's look at the non-creature hate. Sisse doesn't require you to cast a non-creature spell to combo. In fact, once Sisse and Gigantha are on the field, you don't need to cast any spells. Between that and Sisse serving as a tutor directly to the field, once you're set up, you can cast these to give you time to get Gigantha online. Lavinia shuts off a lot of combos and early wins, specifically Adnaws. It and Thalia are also fetchable, which is a plus. Karn is a legendary oof, Sissy scales up to protect it. Rest in Peace is a little more interesting of a choice that doesn't necessarily line up with the game plan, but Sisse does run a decent amount of other stacks pieces even though it's proactive. It does stop quite a lot, from Breach to Razaketh to Hermit Druid, mostly Breach though. There's not a whole lot of recursion going on. Noxious Revival for once isn't included in every deck with green. Take that, Phyrexian Mana. It is included in Sisse since it relies heavily on the Najila line, but Kenrith is reanimation and has good combo redundancy, as does Najila. In fact, the number of one card win cons Najila has access to means that she doesn't run any recursion. Kenny runs Breach, which could serve as normal recursion, but it's also a combo piece. Reclamation is used in the Intuition line, but it also has utility outside of it. Finally, we've got the ramp. The decks are all proactive, so they all invest pretty heavily here. They've got the staple rocks. Not much to see here. Jeweled Lotus also makes it into each deck, since they all have powerful generals. They also run the best dorks, as well as some creatures that function like rituals. Ancient Tomb and Gemstone Caverns are cut from Najila since she is the one that most desperately needs to hit her colors. Sisse has Gigantha, but Najila needs 5 colors and running into a colorless land can hurt a lot. Mana Vault is cut for a similar reason. There's not too much Najila can do with a lot of colorless mana, and Najila is cheap enough that you don't need it to power her out. However, she and Kenny run Carpet. Besides the possibility of playing Carpet into Zero Islands, the other drawbacks are only getting the mana in your main phase and only getting one color. Both of these affect Sisse, but they also affect Najila. The difference is, Sisse includes some additional ramp cards that synergize with her game plan, so space is another reason it gets the axe. Najila and Kenny also run Tinderwall, which doesn't make it into Sisse for similar reasons. Sisse and Najila both run Derevi as a combo piece, but it can serve as ramp as well. Bloom Tender makes it into Sisse as well, since it relies on the colors of your permanents like Sisse does, but it doesn't require the permanents to be legendary. Captain Lannery Storm and Malcolm are included because they're legendary cards that ramp in a way that allows you to save up for the combo turn. She also runs Grim Hireling, which is another combo piece. Culling Ritual makes it in as well, but we talked about it earlier. Same with Gigantha, who's the linchpin for the deck's main strategy, and Jessica's Will, which doubles as card draw. Mox Amber is interesting though, since Sisse and Najila both clock in at 3 CMC. However, Mox Amber will only tap for a red or a white respectively unless you get another legendary creature or walker out. Najila just needs to hit her other colors and find a win, while Sisse needs to get Gigantha online, so her game plan requires more mana. 
Additionally, Sisei revolves around legendaries, so Mox Amber will naturally get access to more colors as the game progresses. Finally, Sissy runs Treasonous Ogre, since for 24 life you can put Gigantha in your hand and then on the stack. Najila runs Arbor Elf, since it's a dork that's capable of producing multiple colors of mana depending on what forests you have. Avacyn's Pilgrim and Elves of Deep Shadow are included for similar reasons, but it's to mix the mana production up rather than for versatility. Nature's Will is included as well, which is pricey for ramp, but not so bad for a combo piece. Finally, she runs the auras for lands, which makes each Nature's Will or Derevi trigger better in addition to being cheap ramp. Kenrith is a little more traditional, running the rocks that are normally staples. It also runs the rituals that typically make it into proactive decks. Kenny is on Skirk Prospector, which combos with Dockside in addition to being a red blood pet. Then we've got the cards that don't fit cleanly into any of the other sections. Phantasmal Image is one of the few cards that regularly makes an appearance here. From Dockside to Timna to just a dork if you're desperate, being able to copy any creature on the field for just 2 mana is an excellent rate. It's also a combo piece in Kenrith. Final Fortune is a rare one for me. Kenrith uses it to assemble the Breach combo, but Najila doesn't even run Breach. Instead, it's included in Najila in case you need just one more turn to win. You could be short on warriors, need another land drop to hit your colors, or you could just be short on mana. Either way, it'll give you the margin you need. Alright, we've gone through each deck with a fine tooth comb, now let's take a bird's eye view. Najila and Kenny are pretty similar in terms of the amount of removal run, but Sisse invests a little heavier into it since if something like Cursed Totem comes down, there's no backup combo for her to pivot to. That being said, her removal and stack count is bolstered by legendaries that only made the cut because they're legendaries. Kenrith and Najila do run more draw, since they still need to find a win, while Sisse can tutor for the win con. She also runs stacks pieces since once you have the commander and the elk on the field, she doesn't need to cast any spells. Kenrith's recursion is bolstered by breach, but Najila has multiple one card win cons so recursion isn't really necessary. Kenrith and Najila both run high amounts of ramp since the sheer card quality allows them to, but Sisse goes harder since, like I mentioned before, she's essentially 5 color Godo. And that wraps it up. Credit goes to Pongo, Flash Andretti, and Rebel Sun for the decks, and Scryfall for the images. The links to each deck will be in the description. I had a lot of fun going over them. It was interesting to see the effects of having access to the entire commander card pool. My socials are linked in the description and I run polls on Twitter to determine the topics of future videos. If you enjoyed the video or found it beneficial, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you all so much for watching. I'm your host Michael, and I'll catch you on the rebound at the beginning of your next upkeep.